I will give you a little bit of a, about myself and my life. And when I spoke before, it was on abuse. Now, abuse is a chain, too. The one that gives it, the one that takes it. It's a chain that has to be broke only by God and through God. But, and today I'm going to speak on breaking free. There's a lot of things we can break free from. from my, I'm a little dry. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about myself. When I was 15 years old, 14, I, I played sports. I was a tomboy, okay? Now, everybody can understand that, can't they? <laughs> How many tomboys did we have in here today? <laughs> you got it. If it was a sport, I played it. And I was going through school, and I wanted to be a basketball coach, or any kind of coach I could be, which includes baseball and everything. I was 15. I was playing basketball one night and when the game was over, and by the way, we won. I uh, had a girl come up to me and say, my brother wants to meet you. I said, OK. So I got up and went out, which we were supposed to still be in the gym. But I went out to meet him. Well, going out to meet him against the rules was my first mistake, OK? <laughs> this is my first husband I'm talking about, not my Jerry. Praise God I got him. Well, I fell madly in love. I didn't even like boys. I didn't know what this feeling was. It just floored me. So, at the age of 15, now I want to tell you about my family first. I had a beautiful mother, a Christian mother and one of the best stepdaddies that could ever be. My mom broke free from my real father, who was an alcoholic, a drunk. When he wasn't, it, well, alcoholic and drunk, same thing. Now, it is in a sense. But I, my real father was also a womanizer and a gambler. So this started the link in the chain. Some of you may not agree with me, but my mo because my mom, when she got pregnant then, she was 32, but she had me. And then when she got pregnant with my brother, my grandmother on the house side tried to poison her to get rid of the baby. And my mom says, no, I prayed to God for years and years because they told her she couldn't have children. I prayed to God for years and years to be able to have children, so she left. She broke free. She broke free from all that, and she's very lucky because I had some of the best aunties and uncles God could ever give a person. So my aunt and uncle took my mommy in. She had my brother at seven months, and back then, I'm 74 and he's three years younger than me, so back then they're just they didn't expect him to live, but he did. God had given my mama two children. Well, as soon as, and then when you were pregnant, you couldn't get a divorce. I don't know about that now, but, but she had Gary and filed for divorce and got the divorce and broke that chain. She broke the chain from my real father completely. Now, my mom was a soft-hearted, good woman. <laughs> but one time my real father came in and he was real drunk and he'd been out with the women and gambling and all this. They called him Shanny because he hung out at the shanties. It, but you young girls have no idea what that is. It's a bad place, <laughs> okay? <laughs> well, anyway, he come in. I guess he decided he's going to pick on her. So she went in the kitchen, picked up one of the medium-sized iron skillets and laid him low. I mean, now, I could never do that. I, there you go. <laughs> I'm sure we're, we're talking to the hearts here now. We're, we're going to be set free here. Some of us, 
There is more than one way to be in bondage. And that's what it is. It's bondage. Well, anyway, about my brother was about six months old. And she met my daddy Dan, which they had known each other all practically all their lives. And daddy was six foot two. He was a good stepfather. My mom prayed before she ever married again and everything and sent Daddy Dan. I had a good home. I was taken out of the drunken rage and the coming in and taking every dime my mama had. And I'll tell you a little more about my mom. That woman could drive a dump truck and a motorcycle as good as any man. <laughs> and she just had stamina about her, but she always had God with her. Always. And I, I like, she's been gone a long time. And you know what, you young kids? I miss her more now than I did when she died because she was sick. And I knew that it, it was a blessing that she was going to heaven and be with Daddy Dan. Well, that is how my life was as a young girl. So I met this handsome dude. Boy, I mean, he was nice, I thought. Fell in love. Like I said, I didn't even like boys. I wanted to play sports. Well, I fell so madly in love with him, and I got pregnant. 15 years old. He was 21. That was these days the parents could have put him in jail. But you didn't do that. And I told my mama, I made this bed, I'll sleep in it. Well, I did when I wasn't yanked out of it. He was an abuser, womanizer. On our marriage night, we was riding around in the car waiting on the reception. Now, we were poor people, my mom and them. But she bought me the prettiest wedding dress she sacrificed. And sewed and made pies for the restaurant and all that kind of stuff to buy me this wedding dress. When it got time to go to the preacher's house, Clarence told him, said, no, there's nobody going with us. We got his sister and, and her husband standing up with us. I didn't even get to choose my own bridesmaid. Well, that should have been a little bell then, but I was young. You don't, you don't think about things. Well, you all would more now because it's, a, it, it's brought up more. On my wedding day, we was riding around small town Pilot Grove and the law stopped us. He was in the best man's car and he was gonna arrest my husband that I'd just married. And he said, well, this is my wedding day. And he looked in the car and he said, well, this ain't the blonde you was with last night. So can you imagine? I'm just 16. I'd taken care of everybody's kids and I'd cleaned house for aunties. And us older women know how that is. You 14, boy, you're a babysitter, a housekeeper, and taking care of all the cousins and everything. Well, he had put me on a pedestal. I don't want to dwell on this too long because it took me through legal drugs, alcohol. Those that you know me now would never believe that, but it did. I was an alcoholic. And I never drank until after he died. But he abused me in so many ways, and so did his family. His mother, I hate to speak ill of the dead, but she was one wicked woman. And so when he was gone, she kept the younger boys keeping an eye on me. They, that's like I was guarded in my own home. And so if I had went to the grocery store, taken Tina with me and pregnant with my son, Tracy, at 18, this went on for nine years and 11 months. 
nine years, and they would tell me, well, she was in the grocery store. She was probably talking to so-and-so and so-and-so. So when he got home, I got a whooping or be beaten. I'm sorry. Why I'm so dry? I'm a little nervous. It's hard to dredge up these kind of things. But once you've been set free, and you're free indeed, honey, I got some over there in my little Maui thing. I take a lot of medicine, girls. <laughs> it just <laughs> makes me but Thank you, Jill. That's my sweetie right there. <laughs> That's another thing about our family, Genesis, and our family is the love. I've never known such love. Even I've been married to Jerry now 33 years, but before I met this family, other than my own personal family, I didn't know there was that kind of love other than mine, you know. And they're beautiful, beautiful people, every one of them. When my son was three years old, healthy, healthy as he could be, I thought, they called him Hoss after Hoss Cartwright because he had the broad shoulders, a black wavy hair, and oh, he was just gorgeous. Uh, but at the age of three, he came to me and he says, Mommy, I can't breathe. So the doctor started with him for Four days he was gone. He had had massive tumors and they operated on him. A doctor from Mayo Clinic, one from New York and one from MU. That's where they operated on him and he didn't make it. But I want to tell you something. This, has, this is, all goes in with breaking free and cutting loose from the, sometimes the nature of things. I bargained with God when they come out and they told me this one doctor from Mayo said never seen anything like it nine and a half hours if he lives 48 hours he'll make it and be healthy everything will push back in so outside ICU I bargained with God you see right before then I had never even hardly mentioned God it got sort of, God got pushed back on the back burner. I never stopped believing, never stopped trusting, but I just didn't live it. You see, he's always there. He's there and waiting for us to say, God, help me. He'll break them chains. He'll break them. I know that now, but I lived through a lot of years of, well, they say, <laughs> people say this, I have lived my hell, but I know hell's a lot worse than what I went through. It's hard to imagine. So after my son passed away, I sort of lost it. They gave me a shot, and for three days I didn't know anything. I can't even hardly remember his funeral. But my daughter, Tina, brought me out of it. She come into my mother-in-law's house. I wasn't at my mama's house where I'd have the comfort. They all blame me because I didn't know he was sick. So there you go. There's the, that, that four or five more links in that chain. So for years and years and years, I thought it was my fault. I should have known my son was sick. But they said, well, no way you could know he was healthy until it growed around his lungs. On my 21st birthday, I better watch what I'm doing because, boy, I can gab. <laughs> Carolyn, give me a little wave, will you? <laughs> she, that's my sister. Sister in Christ. She's helped me a lot with a lot of things. You'd be surprised how much you have in common. Now, don't get me wrong. David's never beat her because she'd be one to use the iron skillet. Okay? <laughs> Ain't that right, sis? <laughs> but I was a meek and loving and caring person, but he had beat me time after time after time, and after Tracy died, it got worse. Now, this all happened to me before I was 21 years old. 
I almost went crazy because I thought I'm going to have another child. I'm not raising Tina by herself. So I went off of my, um, just a minute. I went off my birth control pills because doctors had told me never to have another child that would probably kill me. Well, I got pregnant, so we all thought, but it was a false pregnancy. But it went on into a uh, into my uterus, a hydanophobe mole. I don't know if any of you is in the medical field or not. So at the age of 21, I was dying. I was bleeding to death, just literally bleeding to death. And on Memorial Day, I was in the hospital. I was there for about four months. I didn't eat, couldn't eat for about four months. I got down to 87 pounds. I'd rather be fat like I am now than 87 pounds. I look like a refugee from overseas. Really? <laughs> but anyway, that's a little about me. And I got through that and a complete hysterectomy. And I almost lost my mind over that. So I got on prescriptions. I had every kind of prescription you can imagine. On my 21st birthday, everybody decided and they knew I didn't drink and I didn't smoke and I didn't do any of this stuff I was taught not to do. Only thing I did was get married against my mom's wishes. And it, it's amazing to me how our Father in Heaven works. It still amazes me, because I cried out to him a many a time. Why, Lord? I've had four, four chances now in my life, maybe five, uh, that I could have died. Well, like Paul Harvey says, he knew the rest of the story. He had saved me for this and teaching and worshiping and witnessing. And I can agree, and I can associate with drug addicts. Oh, mine were legal. Oh, I tried marijuana a few times, but <sighs> made me lazy and I was hyperactive. I didn't want nothing to slow me down. <laughs> I mean, come on, what good is it? <laughs> I want to slow down, I'll take down, take one of these what do you call them? Lowers or whatever. You got your uppers and lowers and pills. Well, I had about four prescriptions of them. And you know, I've never told this. And I told God, I said, God, you tell me what you want me to say to these people. But I'm going to tell you later. On my 21st birthday, he asked me if I had a good time, and I said yes. He hit me so hard. He beat me almost to death. As a matter of fact, him, his mother, and his father thought I was dead. Laying there in that bed dead. You couldn't have recognized me. I drank soup through a straw for two weeks. And I want to tell you young girls how love is too. I still love that man. He couldn't beat it out of me. I'm not, I, I wasn't like my mama. I did kick a crutch out from underneath him one time because he couldn't catch me. He cut three of his toes off cutting pope wood. But anyway, they wanted me to press charges and they wanted me to do this, but I woke up, I come to, and the bedroom was over here. And Well, anyway, the living room, uh, kitchen was right pretty close to it and I could hear him talking. And I looked down and I didn't have my pretty white roughly blouse on. And I could see over to the sink, and my mother-in-law was washing it out, trying to get rid of all the evidence. They thought I was dead, people. And, and she, this kind of woman she was, she said, now, Clarence, we got to take her somewhere and throw her in the river or do something because you're going to go to prison for killing her. Well, my father-in-law stepped in then, and he said, no, we will not. It's bad enough this happened. He beat her that bad, he can pay the price. Well, he didn't mess with his dad much because he, he used to beat his mother. Okay, it was a, a it is, it's in the gene. But if you've got God in your heart, 
and you love God with all your heart, which I did not with all my heart, no. I'd be a lie, and the Lord strike me right here, but I, I believed, okay? I believed. I believed in Jesus. I cried when I'd think about what Jesus had done and how he'd suffered. When I had that beating at 21, and you couldn't recognize me, and I had a busted jaw and some broke ribs and a lot of things. And I asked God then, why am I not dead? But they were planning my get, getting, away, getting me. Well, you would think after that I did go over and stay with my mother. <laughs> I don't want y'all to get the wrong opinion of my mother. But she and daddy come over to get me. Mom brought the shotgun. <clears throat> I mean, really, she did. She brought the shotgun, and the woman couldn't have shot. Uh, well, it knocked her on the ground. She'd never shot one. Well, she stepped out of the car after she got a hold, got me, and seen the shape I was in, thinking I was dying, rushed me to the hospital. They come out on the front porch. Mama, Daddy honked the horn, and he said, Now, Rube, her name was Ruby, don't shoot nobody. We can't. We got to get this girl to hospital <laughs> and be just like them to take them instead of her. <laughs> That's my daddy dad. Anyway, my mom stepped out there and she fired that gun. And you talk about two people that were scared, and that was Clarence and his mother. They thought that, and I looked at mom, I said, Get in this car. Well, I could barely talk. Get in a car. I set it under my. So they took me, and the doctor wanted to put me in the hospital, and I wouldn't go. Well, you would have thought then that'd been enough. But it wasn't. I'm going to ride back to it. Ride back to it. I will say this. That scared him bad enough that the, uh, the next time he did whip me, I had left him. My mom and dad moved far enough away he didn't want to get too far away from his running territory and so I got I broke free I literally broke free and went and lived with my mom and dad and and of course my daughter with me too well I thought I was safe so I filed for divorce and I got the divorce now this happened nine years and eleven months I was married to him total abuse. Of course, I got my divorce and all that kind of stuff. I went right back to him. I went over there. I went back to him. I couldn't get rid of this love that I had for this brutal man. And I didn't like his mom at all. God, forgive me. I've been to the altar many times on my own asking God. And my, my heart is softer now. Because I don't know what kind of life she led and how bad it was. I knew a little. But there's just some people that are evil. There's an evil out there that I'm sure a lot of you have, some of you maybe have seen it. Not Janice and I have seen quite a bit of it. He was sick. I moved back in the house, which he got everything. I didn't care. I just wanted out. And then I went back over there. But he had a girlfriend that left her husband and three children for him. And I thought, what on earth? I hope he doesn't do her like he did me. But it scared him so bad that he thought I was dead that he wasn't as quick with his fist just on me. I went into the tavern one time after him, and I said, I'm taking my daughter home. You're in this tavern. You're drunk, and I'm, she's not going to be with you. I got a little backbone about me, and I walked in there. Well, boy, I had hair all the way down to here, black, thick hair. He jumped down off of that bar stool, and he hit me and grabbed me by the hair of the head, and the man that owned the tavern said, Clarence, turn her loose, get outside. So he turned me loose, and I run to get outside, and he took me by the hair of the head. It had just rained and drugged me up and down the streets. No one 
came out to help me. Nobody. And finally, the man that owned the tavern come out, and he had a shotgun. He said, now turn her loose. So he did. He, he had that kind of a temper. He, he'd walk into a bar and say, I'm a blankety-blank bear, and it ain't Teddy. And if he couldn't get a fight somewhere, he'd come home to fight me. So that's the story of me and abuse. Now, after he died, he come up and asked me, he said, I'm sick, will you take care of me? I said, yes, I still love you, I'll take care of you, what's wrong? He said, well, I'll tell you, I gotta run down and pick up, a, he had a convertible. And he had painted that competition orange back in days. And he said, oh, well, I'm gonna die anyway, Kay. But he said, as long as I've got, I want you and I to raise Tina the way she should be. And I said, you know what, I, I want to know something. Then it came to me. This man's going to die and go to hell. I said, have you talked to the good Lord about it? He said, I called him the man upstairs. He said, yeah, the other night, me and the man upstairs had a real good talk. And I didn't go into it about what or nothing. But he said, that car, I'm going to die in that car right over there. And he did that very day. The day that I told him, that I would continue to live with him. And I knew there would be a time when I was going to get smacked clean down to the floor and, and drugged somewhere. But that was love. I married him. That well, I was supposed to spend the rest of my life with him. He was killed in a car wreck. Killed two other people. Beheaded them. Hit water and car planed. And he was going fast. He drove 90, 100 mile an hour. So there was that one chain that had clamped, because I said I'd go back with him, was broke. Just like that, the same day. But that was God. It wasn't me. It was God breaking that chain. I thought later about how I'd had to live and why the Lord took my son. He knows. He knows our lives right down to the blink of our eye. He knows it. And he loves us enough that he's going to take care of us one way or another. But I loved him so much. And people... They had offered me drinks and stuff on my 21st birthday when I got the beaten. And so this one guy said, well, this is homebrew, white lightning. I said, but I like grape knee-high soda pop. And so they put it in the grape knee-high soda pop. Boy, it was good. It was, it was good. I, I didn't really get drunk, but I was so numb. I was numb for a long time after that because I, I turned into an alcoholic. But the doctor told me when I got there, my doctor was family doctor, and he said, Casey, he said, did you drink anything? And I said, yeah. Somebody gave me white lightning, and he said, it was like an anesthetic. That's what saved my life. I was limber enough, and, and I didn't go into shock. And I said, well, phew. I'm going to have to save my life another way because I don't want to do that. But I ended up drinking for six and a half years real heavy. I had my own bar, on my bar and everything. And I, all people would come in, talk, even the women. You know, ain't nothing like talking to a good bartender that understands. Pooey. I didn't understand. I didn't have God in my heart. I couldn't witness to them. I did tell one guy one time, I said, well, your wife needs to leave you and you need God. Now, this is behind the bar. This is in a bar. I like to die a couple times from alcohol poisoning. And then I met Jerry. <laughs> God sent me Jerry and his family. One day we'd sit at the table and because Jerry had never read the Bible, he didn't know much about it other than when I did marry him, I, we, I kept my mom for six years. She's 
got real sick. We kept her, and she would watch Jimmy Swaggered. So there was another chain getting broke right there. And then my chain was way above my head. Anyway, he said, we're going to church. I said, okay. After nine years, six years of drinking, having alcohol poisoning twice, the third time I was married to Jerry, he said, if it ever happens again, you're out in the street. You know, he knew it was going to kill me. And personally, I didn't care. I just didn't care. I got so much I want to do. Oh, I haven't got about 15 minutes. But you're nobody that hungry? Okay, because I, I, got, I got some good stuff here, I think. I didn't, the Lord didn't give it to me till last night, but that's, a, you wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. He'll give you your message. So I want you to know if there's anyone out there that's ever been through abuse or alcoholism, and mine was legal drugs. This is a story I wasn't going to tell, but God's prompted me to do it because I'm thinking somebody might have felt this way. One night I woke up. I had all my pills lined up on that dresser, three different pain pills, nerve pills, uppers, downers, whatever they wanted to call them. Me, it was nerve pills and pain pills and something to go to sleep by, and I took them all. I said, that's it. That's it. I'm tired of this. I can't get loose from this. I can't break these chains. I'm carrying this ball around with me. Everywhere I go with my drink. I said, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. It's not me. So I took all the pills. Well, my sister-in-law at that time, her ex-sister-in-law is still very good. A friend of mine was a nurse. But before I did it, before I went to get my whiskey and beer to wash them down completely with, and I knew that would do it, I called my mama. And I thanked her and told her what a wonderful person she was. Mama says, okay, Katie, we love you too. Well, she was hanging up the phone, Daddy's starting the car. They knew. When they got there, I was on the floor. I've never told this story. I don't even think Janice knows this story. <laughs> but this is how God can work. I gave up. I wasn't strong enough, and I didn't have God in my life like I should. My anchor, the one that breaks the chains free. I didn't have him in my life like I should. And I was sitting down before I got open. The pill started working. So before I got to the alcohol, my mom was indoors. She was just four blocks down the road. But in that length of time, I was sinking bad enough that my body had on a black nightgown, and I'm here, and my body was over here, and I was trying to get back to it. I knew I'd made a mistake. I was trying to get back to my body. And then come my mom, and she called Sandy, and she walked me. Next day, I turned myself into Midmo, which is in the University of Columbia that, for people like me. I didn't want to die. And God let me live. He let me live to this very day. I'm here. I said, I said Janice asked me one time. I said, Katie, have you ever, Kay, have you ever thought about teaching? I said, Oh, I can't teach. I don't know enough about the Bible. She said, Well, pray about it. Cause oh, that's my sister. So I did. And I taught, I've, since 2002, I taught for quite a while and then sub now. And then she asked me to speak today, and I thought, I can't do this. Ooh. Is there, has God ever gave any of you a spanking? The first time I spoke on abuse, which was a lot more than this, but I don't have time for all of it. 
I asked God, I said, the same thing about teaching. And when I asked him, I said, God, do you want me to teach? It, should I teach? Should I witness? I'm not worthy. See? I've been in church quite a while, and I still didn't think I was worthy. I said, I'm not worthy to speak your words. And the still voice in my head said, and I know you all have experienced it, do you love me? I said, yes, God, I love you. You're my life. I can't make it through this. You've seen me through it for years and years, and I didn't even acknowledge you for it. And I said, but I'm not worthy. He said, do you love me again? And I said, yes, I do. He said, then teach my word. And one thing God gave me was a lot of discernment in my life. And I can't tell that story either. Well, maybe we'll do this next year and I'll continue. Okay, everybody just hang on. All right. <laughs> but I wanted to ask all of you. Uh, I don't want to offend anyone. But there's all kinds of abuse, bondage, all kinds of bondage. It could be anything. And just, I want to ask one or two of you to speak out and say, what is one of the things that, that we need to break the chains on in this world today? All of us sitting here have had probably some kind of a problem in our life or something that has about killed us or you wanted to die. So somebody name me one. Of this day and age, what can we break? Um, well, mine's food now and I'm still praying about that. <laughs> Heavier than I ever been, but uh, it's just like um, verbal abuse. Either or, and from someone you love deeply. That's why I, uh, with Tina, I said, "You can get by with most anything because it was just her and I." And. 16 years difference in us and I said you can do anything but don't you sass me well she sasses me all the time now but she's 58 <laughs> I think she forgot and thank God she's turned to God for a long time she didn't and she lived the life with me people that's something else you got to think about who's who's suffering who's suffering because of you and what you're doing. Give me another abuse. Something that this day and age we need to keep broke away from. Drug abuse. Legal drugs. Legal. Doctor will want to give me this and that. And I said, what's it do? And I won't take a pill now. And I do take a lot of them by this for my heart. I pray over them. I said, God, don't let, let this work and don't let it make me sick. So all of you out there today, I have a, you're probably thinking, is she ever going to read from the Bible? <laughs> I am. Well, we all have something to break away free from. And I hope if there's anyone out there and hearing my story and know that I have broke away that chain that ball is gone I live with a very dominant husband Janice tell you the same thing he bossed them kids around till they was ready to stone him <laughs> ain't that right Janice <laughs> and so at 78 he's still the boss but I've I stood up with him I said this will be equal if you're going to tell me, you know, be verbally abusive to me, I'll be verbally abusive because I had all those years to practice. I, mean, I had never done it. 
I didn't know how to speak mean to anybody. In Psalms 25, verse 15, I'm going to close. Said, I love this psalmist. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Keep your eyes on the Lord, people. He'll get you through a lot. He get me through it. And then I almost, you know, so many times I've almost died and come back and said, why? God has a purpose. He has a purpose in each and every one of our lives. And true, we've made mistakes. We, But he was with me in the valley where I was. I lived in the cold, dark, cloudy valley. I've had the devil try to take my life many a time in dreams. But Janice and I was in St. Louis, and we went to a, um, what was his name? The funny one, white-headed one. <laughs> oh, why can't I remember? But anyway, he came, I, before, before we got there, I told the girls, I said, pray for me because, and we got together a lot, this group of women did, and prayed, and I said, pray for me because if I have this dream one more time, I won't make it through the dream. I won't make it. And I didn't do pills and stuff, and didn't run and grab a bottle of alcohol or um, go out and see if I could find a boyfriend or something like that, you know. I, I didn't. I married to Jerry very happy. And they said, well, what is it? And I said, I can't say it. I, can, I have never told that dream, and I won't. Oh, what is his name? He's real funny. Jesse, Jesse. Yes, Jesse Duplantis. And I said, so pray for me. He come out on that stage. Everybody praising the Lord and everything. And I'm sitting there. And this curtain, black curtain, just sets right down between me and him. He come out there and he said, there's someone in this audience that's having a bad dream. I dream that the Lord has told me he's going to destroy you if you don't get rid of it. And I want you to come up here right now and let me pray for you. Now, Janice will testify to this. They said, Kay, go up and be prayed for. And Janice said, there was a look on my face. And, and Kay Scott, that was scary. You see, the devil was trying to destroy me still, but he ain't going to. He's under my feet. I'm not under his. He's under mine. But finally, Janice, they just stood back. And finally, Janice walked behind me, put her hand on my shoulder and said, Sis, it's going to be all right. You can do this. I said, I can't move. My, my legs won't move. And when I got down there, he prayed for a couple other people to come up there too. But when he prayed for me, he took me by the head like this. And he prayed for me, and then he jumped back. And the water was just literally running down his hands. And he come back again, and he grabbed hold of my face, and he said, I said, leave this woman now. Well, of course, down on the floor I went. Never had to dream again. I haven't forgot it because that was a bondage. That was a bondage. And I will never be under bondage again. The only, and you can't use it as bondage, the word bondage, but the only power, put it that way, supreme power that I want to be under is my heavenly father. He covered them in the wilderness when they couldn't even go into the, to the land that they wanted to be. And he said, be strong. While Moses is talking to them, they couldn't go. You all know the story. And Moses told them, said, God says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. And I put that the world now. Don't be terrified of the world. For the Lord your God give, goes with you. 
He will never leave you. Woo, praise his holy name. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. With God can break you loose from any chain that binds us. And John, he said, he will, and the psalmist said, he'll break them chains around your feet that snare. So just girls, I can tell you're all good. Oh, you're wonderful God lovers. You, I can just see God through each other. Even with this light blinding me. Oh, there you are. Y'all were so aglow. But you still are aglow with the love of God. A lot of you I know. And I know you've been through trials. And I'm just five minutes late. That ain't too bad. I could go on and on. Yes, Janice? I will. Okay. Well, I want to thank all you ladies for coming out. Thank Janice for asking me to speak over I pondered and pondered and pondered. Going to use the excuse I was going to ride my horse, which I'm a horseback rider, 74. I love it. And that's another gift God gave me. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord God, and we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for everything we have and everything we will have, Lord. We just, I just ask you now, in the name of Jesus, if there's anyone here in this room today or in the kitchen fixing dinner, if there's anyone that you break those chains, Lord God, you break the chains and let them know that you'll never leave them, never forsake them. They will always walk with you. Thank you, my Jesus. Thank you. We ask you to bless this food to nourish in our minds and bodies. And we ask you, God, to go with us and let us go in peace and safety as we leave this place this evening. And, God, I just pray right now for all the alcoholics and the drug addicts, the whoremongers, the porno people. I pray for them, God, because I know your heart is broke. And it breaks my heart to know that your heart's breaking for your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.